I'm going to show you something. I mean, everybody knows Grant Cardone. And here again, a situation where somebody, the SEC, is going after him. And guess what he was promising? 15%. Court revives lawsuit against 10x wealth guru Grant Cardone. Who is the court? The court is the SEC. Look, I'm not taking a cheap shot at the guy. I'm just telling you. You guys want to see what a $550,000 investment into Cardone Capital gets you? I am seeing projects to invest in for 17% returns. What are your thoughts about investing in these apartments? Many of them are through crowdfunding or syndications. What type of questions should I be asking before investing? Oh my God, that's, that's a great question. I, I, um, so when somebody's pitching you on a project, the first question I ask them is, how much money do you have in that project? I'm a fund manager. I got millions of my own money. As of last account, I had over $8 million in the real estate fund. That represents over 40% of the money that was raised. I get the loans under my name with my guarantee, personal guarantees. That means I can lose everything I have in my fund. Okay. No other fund managers do that. I had a guy that was raising millions of dollars for apartment buildings. And in his pitch, I was at an event, I presented, and then I got off the stage and he came up to present and he said, and somebody asked him, are you investing in the project? He said, of course I am. Well, I know the guy very well and I know his PPM and I know the attorney that worked with him. And I know that he invested $1,000 in a project that is a $17 million apartment building project. He invested $1,000. Why? So he can stand in front of the audience and says, I'm investing in this. Well, that's BS. That's misleading. That's misrepresentation. The real estate funds filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission are based on what's called full disclosure, not buyers beware, full disclosure. That means the question was clearly to this guy, are you investing in this fund? And he should have said, yes, I am investing. I invested only $1,000 because, and then he can explain, I'm getting the loans under mine, but he wasn't. He was getting the loans as non-recourse loans. So he put a thousand, gets investors money into the deal, gets a loan from the bank that's non-recourse. Something goes wrong, he loses a thousand, walks away, the investors lose their money, and the bank is foreclosing now because non-recourse, all the recourse they have is the asset. They're gonna go dump it. If there's any money left over, SEC is gonna be involved now to try to distribute for all these people. So ask him first, how much money do you have in the deal? Okay? and ask them in writing. So you always have a backup. Something goes wrong, you go to the SEC. You may not recover much, they'll go to jail. That's your revenge, really. They will go to jail. I mean, believe me, SEC is hot and bothered since uh, COVID. Since 2019, they increased so many of the SEC people, it's not even funny. This is all they do is uh, constantly do what's called administrative audits, uh, investigations, uh, subpoenas uh, for interviews. They do them on Zoom now. The world has changed. It used to be they have to go to their office. You have to fly in to whatever office or drive to their office by state. Now it's all on Zoom. So they love it. And then they do like this. They say, okay, so we found some irregularities. This is no big deal. Just pay us 100,000 and case is closed. But then it will show on your record and good luck raising money anymore. I have, uh, uh, I have gone through these. I've dealt with the SEC for the last 13 years. And thank God we've always done well with them. We have gone, and Ashley is my witness here. We've gone through uh, administrative audit when they look back at my finances 14 years back with all my companies. Companies have nothing to do with the SEC. In California, in Puerto Rico, and in Florida. And they, guess what? At the end, they send a letter. Thank you. This was just a simple administrative audit. We, there is nothing we can even suggest. Why? Because my investors get paid. So when people can, you, you want to ask this person, how much money do you have in the project? Have you had other similar projects? How have you done in the past? How many years have you been in the business? If that person has been in the business since 2013 till now, he has or she has no idea what's coming or what a down cycle is. You need somebody who has gone through 2008, 9, 10, 11, when the economy had collapsed. Those people got so burned that now they're a lot more cautious. But remember that those who started 
Most of them started in 2015 when Obama Jobs Act allowed people to set up something called Reg D 506C and the Reg D 506C allowed people to publicly solicit. And then they over promise and under deliver to offer you 17%. This person is either smoking something or is living in La La Land, especially in current market where you cannot get interest rate at less than six, 7% if you're good and experienced and have a high net worth. Case in point, I'm going to show you something. I mean, everybody knows Grant Cardone. I mean, the guy is, is the biggest promoter of funds. And here again, a situation where somebody, the SEC is going after him. And guess what he was promising? 15%. Court revives lawsuit against 10X wealth guru Grant Cardone. Who is the court? The court is the SEC. The SEC is after him. And you can see it on South Florida magazine. And look, I'm not taking a cheap shot at the guy. I'm just telling you, the guy offered 15%, which is not 17. And he is huge. And he was getting 3% interest rates. He was getting amazing interest rates. Can deliver, can pay, can even pay them 10%. And they went first round with him during COVID because he said, told the investors, I can't pay you. I can't pay you. The renters are not paying me. And then they worked it out because he made up for the money a little bit and then can't deliver. Now he's coming out of properties and he's barely able to pay the investors. So the SEC is after him again. So to offer you 17%, um, it's confusing because they're going to put it as IRR. IRR is internal rate of return instead of ARR, which is annual rate of return. So they mislead you with some initials, which is very hard for you to calculate. How would they know what your internal rate of return is they don't know what how much you pay in taxes and they get you into these deals and now you want to get out they say well you can avoid the taxes if you stay with us in the next deal etc so they get you in they don't pay you enough they say we'll make it up to you in the next deal and you get suckered into long-term things i went off on a tangent to tell you understand who is behind the deal what is the deal about look at the numbers I'm happy as a pro bono thing. You can send us the PPM. I'll analyze the heck out of it and tell you my opinion at no, no charge whatsoever. Just curious to expose a 17%. Like, give me a break.